10, 2024. And we'll bring the program to you this Thursday morning. My name is Usman Kamara. And Musa Kamara, na my name uh, Good morning. Inside the edition of the program Good Morning Salon, the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, Conrad Sakidon, confirms the ministry will officially pull the 2024 worst results come out today, Thursday, October 10, 2024. The executive chair for the Petroleum Regulatory Agency, PRA, Brahma Balwa Kuromasi, the couple with the agency, the gather for government as revenue, don't go up from 473 billion inside 2023 to 1.2 trillion, and government say go use this couple for develop other area them. And today inside the program, Radio Democracy, Go talk to Abdullah Senesi, Director of Investigation Office of the Ombudsman. We go talk about the Ombuds Monday 2024 and all that in them with the Apuna this office. Well, this and plenty other stories and therefore inside the program this morning. Plus, we go talk to the Commissioner of Labor and the Ministry of Labor, Employment and Social Security, Chibli Francis Kamara. We go can talk about the 24th annual meeting and modernizing labor policies for economic growth. The program at Good Morning Salon, where they come to you live from Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. Members say the list will be live on, uh, we, on the internet on www.radiodemocracy.sl. Members say the Rock Metal Group, the sponsor of Radio Democracy, for bringing the program Good Morning Salon come to you. And this program powered by Afrisen. With the list will be live from Radio Partner, them, Radio Chalet 89.5, Nakon and Adugan, Falabadi Street. Same also on Radio Maleng 88.5, Radio 1J11.3, Napujon District. Radio Colin 1090.0, Nakambia. Radio Moa 105.5 na Kailangu, Vopa the Radio na Watalo, Voice of Sandona Kono District, Voice of Karine na Kamakweo 98.0, Voice of Masu na Pujon District, Jange Radio 99.3 FM na Lawabon District, and Advocacy Radio na Putloko District. The program na Good Morning Saloon, where they come to you live from Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. If you want to be part of the program, you can send in a message on Radio Democracy Facebook page or drop in a message on the number 077-981-981. The program, uh, Good Morning Saloon, in the country from 98.1 FM. We start for a look at issues with the Senior Permanent Secretary and the Minister of Employment, Labor and Social Security, Joseph Kanose, for tap the kind way of employers they, they go against the labor law them. Now, the country make the African Regional Labor Administration Center, the GISABI, to em the GISABI and Employee Labor Inspector now for the monitor factory and institutions them for CC then go by the law. He talked this inside the 24th annual meeting of this organization with the host na Salon. For more on this, we join Chen Inside 1974, some administrators them, now about 10 Africa countries them, being come together and form the Africa Regional Labor Administration Center as well for address labor issue them across Africa. But 50 years now, since that time they then formed this body, for the first time Salon, they host the 24th Committee of Senior ALAC Official Meeting, who said about 60 representatives of them, now 10 Africa countries and presently the Freetown, they engage on labor issues them across the continent. Joseph Tekman Kanu, now the Senior Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Employment, Labor and Social Security, described this idea for host this meeting at Salon as one we will go up for showcase the good thing them where Salon get and say so say inside this meeting the committee will look inside different labor issues them now the continent. Well they get for discuss labor issues, occupational safety health, migration. Now I about the strategic plan 2024-2029. So they get 14 labor inspectors them. They are big, you get about 13 or 14 districts them, or 16. Now, labor inspectors are not spread all across the, you understand? So if we recruit and deploy them, we will find out for see any side we abuse day, then we will for Brianka up. If it's safety issue day, then we will for Brianka up. Inside this engagement, member them that this body be also agree for make Joseph Kanu be chairman for the Africa Regional Labor Administration Center with this means Salon. They take over the leadership of this body for the next one year. So I asked Joseph Kanu what he knew Salon will bring to this organization. Well, the country is we just get for conform to what we will preach in terms of the labor laws them for make sure that they come into fruition. Of course, you don't say we they paratify a lot of conventions them with the ILO, you understand? So then, con then conventions and they give a good standing at the eyes of the international community. So we for, we for practice, what you will tell other people for practice. So as a country, now we're going to have the light now. 
So whatever would they, would they tell people them, them for she say we serve the one. Mon chien Moussassi, dans le principal secteur, dans le district du ministère de Labour et Employment, et dans le outgoing chairman, pour Alak, dans un statement, il dit que le pasteur a dit que le pasteur a fait le dans le labour secteur, as il dit que le pasteur a travaillé ensemble avec les gouvernements de tous les continents pour résoudre les problèmes avec le secteur de face. Et il dit que pour ce cas, le pasteur a expecté le salon pour le pasteur de la salle de la salle. Mesdames et messieurs, le soto a été le chef of this committee of senior officials in a pivotal moment in the history of Allah. We look forward to hearing encouraging progress on the assignments undertaken by the Allah wicked parties on reviewing an alignment of Allah police documents to the constitution of Allah. A key milestone during this period has been the completion of the Allah strategic plan 2024-2029, for which we are all proud of. It is our firm belief as senior officials that the strategy will guide and position Allah to be a regional leader in labor administration matters and capacity building for member states. In San Yun Talk, Honorable Rebecca Yesam, we deserve as the chairperson in Parliamentary Committee on Employment, Labor and Social Security, na Parliament, encouraging and delegate also for his before this conference for find solutions to issue them with the unbook development in the labor sector. These guardians serve as a platform for us to come together, share knowledge, and collaborate towards advancing labor administration practice in our region. Africa is a great continent rich with diversity. Our labor force is a driving force behind economic growth, social development, and sustainable progress. As representatives of labor administration bodies from various countries, in this region, we hold a crucial responsibility to ensure the well-being, rights, and interests of workers are protected and promoted. This year's meeting underscores the importance of creating an enabling environment for workers to thrive while contributing to the growth and resilience of our economies. Honorable Rebecca Yesam, end up promise as Parliament then committed for giving support for CC, this body able for achieve team them with a part of a mandate. For the Society for Real Democracy, me, Na Cheng Nojalo, the report. The program, Na Good Morning Salon, where they come to you live from Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. Inside the program, we they take another issue. Outside the Deputy Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, Emily Kadiatu Gogase, the Logos Hope Bookshop, we come na salon, go get trained to the education sector na the country. Emily Kadiatu Goga talk this in summer meeting. We a been get for welcome the Logo Hope Bookshop um, ship, we then a salon now. For more on this, make we join you in know, Okabia, we mean dinner the ship. From 1973, Logos Hope Bookship. Don't be one of the largest bookship them na the world. Usai the ship don't visit but 150 country them. And self don't welcome 49 million people them on board. Where some pan they walk. Na for si say, them provide access to high quality literature. Show love to people where they need. Promote peace and other things them. Usai they don't make sure say, they sell different books them na any country. Usai the ship go land. And salon na one part the country them wait for long term now. This ship don't they come. And the logos hope ship don't come back na salon for three weeks. Usa them bring different book them for sale and safe. Gets for do different community service them. Edward David, na the managing director for Logos Hope, been talk about the reason why they come back na salon. We are delighted to celebrate this official opening of the Logos Hope visit to Freetown in uh 2024. The Logos, the first ship, visited this port in 1977 and we were here for 19 days. That was the first visit of We Are Sister Ships and since then we have had seven visits of different ships into this port. And for the Logos Hope, this is our third visit. We were here in 2010 and the last time we were here was 2021 and now here in 2024. So it's a real privilege to be back uh, to this city uh, again. And every visit, and I was here in 2000, and, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 2001, uh, and uh, just surveying for this place to see whether it's possible 
for us to come. And it was just not our own visit, but also with the other mercy ship, the Anastasis, we were here together in 2003. In Kayon say, apart from the book where they sell, Logos Hope in say, they do plenty other thing them. You know, the Logos soap is also a vision to make a difference. So we want to do the best that we can to make a difference in a place like this in Freetown, Sierra Leone. So the project of Logos Soap is to advance the well-being of people everywhere we go. And we achieve this in various ways. And one of the ways is by sharing knowledge. You know, acquiring knowledge is a vital part of a person's development and lays a foundation for opportunities and success in life. So wherever we've been, we've been here, we're just amazed to see the hunger for good literature. And we hope to see many of you that will come and visit this world's largest floating book fair and hopefully you will find something that will also acquire knowledge, not just mental knowledge, but also knowledge at heart as well. Where in the talk, the mayor of the Freetown Municipality, I worship even at Kisoya, be welcome the Logos Hope Ship na Freetown. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome the Logos Ship and all, all of its staff to Freetown. It's such a joy to have you here. So I'm going to have to tell the little story now. So as I walked along, I said to, to the director, this brings back memories. On the 27th of June, 1986, my then, my now husband invited me to visit the doula ship as it was. And that turned out to be our first date. A couple of weeks ago, we celebrated our 32nd wedding anniversary. <laughs> So, so the doulas and the logos should have a special place in my heart, but I think they should have a special place in everyone's heart because what we've seen here today, what we saw on the video is nothing short of amazing. Inside in your talk, the Deputy Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education 1, Emily Kadiatu Gogra, been talk about how this book ship important to the country and education sector. It is a remarkable thing, a ship not only known for being the world's largest floating book fair, but for embodying the essence of education and knowledge sharing across the globe. Logos Hope's mission to promote literacy and global understanding resonates deeply with our own national agenda. Education is the connection of our nation's future, and it is the key to unlocking the full potential of our human resource. His Excellency the President Julius Madabio, through his big five game changers, reinforced our government's commitment to improving quality education in Sierra Leone. In the same way, so we talk about the kind change where this book ship will bring come now school picking their life. This partnership between the government of Sierra Leone and the Logos Hope reflects our collective aspirations to create a better future through education. As we look ahead, let us reaffirm our commitments to investing in education, fostering a culture of reading, and preparing our students to be globally competitive citizens. Together, we can build a brighter future for Sierra Leone, one where education is the foundation of both prosperous, peaceful, and inclusive society. Emily Kadiatu Gogra be end up calling salon people, more especially school picking them and school them for visit the Logos Hope Bookship, where this in say go help for get strength to education business that the country. And the Logos Hope Bookship, then a salon for three weeks, and they open Tuesday to Sunday from 10 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock even 10. For Radio Democracy, you know, Kabia the reports. The program na Good Morning Salon will come to you live from Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. As you read one of our headlines to read them inside the program this morning, we will talk to the Commissioner of Labor and the Ministry of Employment and Social Security, Chibli Francis Kamara. We will can talk about um, the 24th annual meeting and mobilizing labor policies for economic growth. Um, and member C, the Ministry of um, Labor, the mandates are for develop policies and program na area them of labor administration, employment, relation and industry 
and same way so social security and protection well for can no more but the meeting and same way so waiting on the happen inside um the ministry make we get the commissioner of labor this morning at radio democracy good morning sir welcome to radio democracy good morning, good morning listeners okay um firstly of these listeners them so far waiting don't they happen at the ministry in terms of on our work well um I believe you know, all of you are say when I don't the area and see the minister they move around from workplace to workplace for go see first stand waiting the app in whether they go inform uh waiting it will do moving forward in terms of improving the working environment. Uh, that is one. Secondly, um we don't they participate. So of course uh Sarah Luna member of international organizations, for example, the International Labor Organization, the Africa Regional Labor Administration Center, etc. So, uh, June uh, this year, we will participate in the International Labor Conference, La Geneva. Mrs. F. Mm -hmm. has been a member of the drafting committee for fundamental principles and rights at work. Uh, in that meeting, of course, the minister began the opportunity for me to be the director general of IOM. Uh, as a result of that, we'll come back. We get for B member of the Global Diaspora Policy Alliance, and uh, Mina also a technical member of the uh, Gender and Youth Technical Working Group. In September, we'll be in the Cabo Verde. We said and go launch the Global Diaspora Policy Alliance. In addition to that, also, of course, we'll be not develop some policies where some of them don't outlive them. Uh, lifespan, if I can put it that way. For example, the National Labor Migration Policy. So we partner with uh, IOM. Uh, the review of that uh, policy don't start because we want for include certain things then they where they're not inside the policy for example ethical recruitment so that when uh, private overseas employment agencies then they recruit nationals of this country for send them out there for doing an ethical manner uh, in addition to that myself personally of course the section five of the employment act if i'm not mistaken give powers to the commissioner of labor for go to workplaces and inspect. Mrs. Sessa be not they move out to certain workplaces. Uh, and they go to skeletal inspection. By that I mean, I know they physically go on the ground, but they engage management and some of the uh, senior management uh, in the institutions. Uh, one, for raise awareness about the new labor laws. Second, uh, foresee the level of compliance with the labor laws. So, for example, at the mention thing, for example, we get for do section 25 of the Employment Act, we talk, say, employer for set up separate uh, bank account for payment of terminal benefit because the challenge we face right now is that uh, when the workman them and the employer them uh, the employment relationship come to an end on a good slate by that i mean the worker not if you not do bad thing entitled to certain benefit end of service benefit etc et so normally we can calculate the person to the employer for pay the worker it can be a challenge. So now that may well be the review the labor laws. We put that particular provision in there okay. for make sure say every year they calculate each worker in end of service benefit, put it into a separate account to you know the touch. So when that time reach for pay end of service benefit, you the right to the commission of labor for give clearance, they take the money out of the account to pay. Okay. Where you go make it easier. All right. Um we self me see um na social media, also the minister go na different, you know, um factory them and one thing we mean come out now that um, most of them company they are not they treat their workman they are fine. Which I mean the response of some of the um, company they will not be engaged because that's it na one way the people them um, really been concerned about. To come again on that, what is the response of the communists? When I don't work on a different company, there. Yeah. And one thing we may come out clear now that um, Nasit, you know, forgive them, you know, close them, outside them for protect themselves. Mm, personal not protective issue. equipment. Yes, not yeah. issue. Mm. What is the response of the management of some of them company and they we on may engage concerning the issue where some of the workmen there is? Well, first, make us say these are statutory provisions. We not we make law. Uh, now parliament now the constitutional mandate for make laws so we as civil servants i know we talk for minister because we're not a minister but we are civil servants with responsibility now for implementing the provisions of the law as they are so for answer your question directly uh, management then they admit say yes the one the thing that we don't do then they say yes this uh, we don't do them the thing that we do not do then they say yes we not do this so section 5 uh, 1d of the employment act 
uh, provide say the commissioner of labor can send improvement notice so mr said don't send i remember i sent to one cement factory i'm not going to name the name exactly but i send the we would expect them for implement the pro because we send an implement notice and they would put a time frame during which we for do certain thing them. So after that we do follow up visit for CSA, you don't do that in a day. So they find us with the passage of time and gradually you see an improvement in the working conditions, etc. etc. So not that. In, in some situation, even the work commander where they work at some of the uh, factory has not even trust the labor officers then. And some of them companies here not get that much regard for labor officers then what you can do in a situation of that well um the some of the communities they not trust labor office some of the labor some officials of the i like that yes i like that yeah, so you know any organization you go find them say you must get bad eggs but that does not mean to say generally all man bad so what we can do in that situation then they will say uh, uh the Communist them come again on that. Uh, I don't get that. At uh, this most workmen them, then laborers them, where they suffer in the hands of the employers them. Some not get trust mm. in the labor officers them. Mm. We can go for go talk for them. Mm. And some of the communists they wouldn't work for not get that regard for uh minister of labor officers them. What thing I can do in situations of that? Because nothing we I don't experience, I don't see, I don't report on and plenty things. So so what thing one I can do is a bit generic. What thing me they do personally? Um I they talk to me officials and say uh, as uh Ministry of Labor, because of the nature of the Ministry of Labor, it's very unique by all the ministries. Now the only ministries where they carry out in work in collaboration with the social partners. By that I mean Sierra Leone Labor Congress, we are a confederation of trade unions, and then Sierra Leone Employers Federation, we are employers then come together for folk that organization day. So we as a ministry, we are expected to be neutral people who would deal with employers and workers, enough for take sides. Even the law make provision for that, enough for take side. So what do you mean they do? I they tell them, say, this is not correct. And if you come to me notice, I they intervene. I don't uh, intervene in one situation where a labor official be they investigate a particular matter in one workplace. So this worker then say a thief. The worker responds not to a thief. Management institute an investigation. One part the uh, recommendation of that uh, report was that let them terminate the man in service, then pay her off. But then along the line, of course the workman go take a lawyer. Along the line, uh, the investigating officer go back and tell the workman say let the uh, worker apologize to the management and if that worker for don't do that uh, that is tantamount to gross misconduct in that or you don't if and under section 91 of the employment act that is summary dismissal and when we say in labor summary dismissal it like you don't work for 30 years once you don't commit acts of gross misconduct for example for thief then they lay you off, they don't give you a cent. So when that matter comes to my attention, I step in. Now I say, I want to see all the documents related to this matter. When I do that, what thing happen? The other day, the lawyer called me, say, the official don't call him. For let come to the ministry. And we come off from the official place, he will come to me. Guess what? When he come out to the official, we come to me, he show me a check of 43,000 some hundred. We didn't pay the worker. So me not the condonant in the day. If you notice that that is the case, I will tell you, say, this is not correct. You stop it. And we move from there. One common thing at the labor system, uh, especially within one them we na laborers na them factories, some some don't they work there for fifteen twenty years, but they never permanent uh, contract by day, by week, by month. So they give them. So, this is a common thing. So 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 that is why um, the employment act. Um, I don't get uh, credible information where they say they're one of the best in Africa. Uh, this year. I even get a Zoom meeting with some officials of the World Bank where they interview me um, about the Employment Act, the processes they will follow through till we get the Employment Act. And then they even ask me, where do we go advise Af other African countries uh, for doing that? So for answer a question directly, Section 43 of the Employment Act, they talk about casual, uh, temporary workers. That one, they, they don't forbid it. So if uh, a worker don't work continually for an employer, six months and beyond, you consider them as permanent. So if place the way for job place them, it is job place them. In other words, the law not allow for the employer uh, they do that casualization. We call them casualization. Somebody don't work for you two, three months, you lay out of there, go take a no, it's not 
allowed. All right, what about somebody don't do over six months but still they don't get any letter? No, you will bring that to a notice and they will go say, I will intervene because. One thing we want to know is, in terms of numbers, we really think on the ground. Now that made the minister move for law, get a concurrent for law, get more staff. We think on the ground. Labor administration for law be effective. You get forget labor inspectors. We then they go inspect. In some countries, each district mm -hmm. get labor official, labor inspector. Mm -hmm. That is not the case with Sierra Leone. We will get there sometime, but it's important for letting them go and then they inspect, if they write reports, if they make recommendations, and once they do that, they go find out, say, the situation could improve, it improve, because each inspection where you go do, you should be able to pick up something we're not correct at that workplace. Otherwise, you're not a good labor inspector. All so right. once you don't pick up that, you for able for write a report, you make recommendation to the employer for let put her in practice within a time frame. If you're not doing the violation of the act, and the act, it make adequate provision for penalties. We take two form. You get fine with a monetary and then terms of imprisonment or both. All so right. I'm not saying any serious employer go one for go through that reality. Continue for the week inside the program in name na Chibli Francis Kamara in uh, Commissioner of Labor and the Ministry of um, Labor employment and social security as idea for talk about um, the 24th annual meeting and modernizing labor policies for economic growth but uh, just to explain and update listeners there about things then so far with the ministry don't they do we we'll go for a short break we'll come we will start off with the other studio guests